Nicholas. Good morning, everyone. So good to see you. Is everybody doing well this morning? Give a thumbs up. Are you doing okay? I know it's kind of been a crazy week. We're not sure how to feel, actually, uh, with the, 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 the moon and the sun yesterday. Did you all see that? Like the stars are out of alignment. There's this war going on in Israel. We're not exactly sure how to feel sometimes when we, when we show up to church, but we can look around and see our smiling faces. Do that right now. See each other's smiling faces. We... We know we're about to sing a song that God is faithful. God is faithful. And so let's remind ourselves this day that God is an everlasting God, that God is faithful. Before we begin our worship service this day, a couple of announcements we want to start out with. First of all, fill out the friendship pads. Uh, They're right there on the inside aisle. Notice in there there's a prayer request card. If you've got something heavy that maybe you're dealing with and you need some help with some prayer, uh, some encouragement, somebody to walk alongside you, please fill that out. Let us know. Let us, our, uh, we'll let our deacons know. We'll let Justin and, and, uh, and uh, let, us, let us, the pastors know. Please do. Uh, let, us, let us help carry that burden with you. Also, there's uh, give online cards, little green cards if you give online. So when the offering plate comes by, you can just put that in there so you don't feel like such a schmuck, you know, the offering plate comes by. Just know proudly, you know, walk your dog proudly. Like, I give online. Yeah, do fill that out. Uh, today, our, we have intermission between the two services, between this service and the next service. We have this, this short little adult education time, and it's intermission. And right now, we're looking at this book called The Mind of Christ. And I would love to encourage you to go to that. Go out to the right there in the narthex, get some coffee, get some donuts, and then wander out into the office and have the short intermission there, uh, the mind of Christ. Also, uh, we have our Discover Grace luncheon uh, next Sunday. And any of you who might be considering or thinking about becoming a member of Grace Presbyterian would like to explore that, would like to discover what's Grace all about uh, please come to that and uh, enjoy yourself with that luncheon. Uh, also, October 26th, Circle of Joy is meeting. Uh, we've got our Trunk or Treat event, which is a wonderful event just after the second service on October 29th. Remember, we are an intergenerational church. We're focused on children and youth and adults, and we create these opportunities for for adults and children and youth to kind of intermix together. We really do need your help. I, we want you to, we have a lot of people coming to our trunk or treat thanks to some of the advertising that Sheila has been doing. We're having a lot of community people come to this trunk or treat event, but we need more than three or four trunks for the kids to come get stuff. So I would love for you to uh, uh, plan on talk with Jessica, talk with Barb over there in the beautiful blue sweater. Uh, let us know. We, we need people to decorate their trunks. All you really need to do is open up a trunk, buy a little thing that has like a, a cobweb in it, and put some candy in it, all right? <laughs> Honestly, let me tell you, the kids are more interested in the candy than they are in how, how much you've decorated your trunk, okay? But we really do need people to volunteer to be the trunks to pass out the candy after the second service. Uh, also, we have our stewardship wine and cheese event in the evening, November 5th, probably 5 o'clock-ish or something. No. Yeah, don't, well, yeah, well, well you, you'll know when we get there, yeah. But plan on in the evening uh, uh, wine and cheese event, and we'll hear all about what's happened in this last year and the kind of a vision that, that Justin has for the new year. And so uh, please plan on that. Other announcements that need to take place at all? Are you glad you're here today? Yes. Are you positive about that? Yes. Did you see what a beautiful day it was when you drove into church this morning? Yes. Let's give thanks to God. Let's uh, celebrate all that God is doing in our lives. Let's join together in worship. Let's all stand up. Sing along with me if you know the song. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is, what a 
seated. How many of you jumped out of bed this morning and looked in the mirror and said, what a beautiful creation of God. <laughs> all of you. You are all beautiful, wonderful masterpieces of God. Take a moment to settle into your seats. Take a deep inhale and exhale knowing you are so beloved and you are so loved by the divine creator of the universe. God calls you God's own, loves you, embraces you, forgives you, and celebrates you just as you are. Amen. Any kiddos here? I see one in the front row. I'm not going to call her out. That would like to help me with the grace blessing. She doesn't have to, it's okay. Oh, we got one. Hey, Xander, come on up. All right, let's ask all these big kids to stand up with us. And you show them, how do we do this? All righty, together we say grace in me, grace in you, grace in all of us. You can go with Jessica back there to faith formation. Let us continue in worship Great is thy faithfulness. Yes, stay standing. Sing loud though, this is the regular version, you can do it.
beautiful singing, y'all. You may you know, take your seats. You're already there. Very good. Fantastic. Whew. Beautiful worship this morning. A little, little keyboard, a little guitar. It's soft in here right now. It's quiet and soft and beautiful. I want you to take a moment, look around. See one another. Keep seeing one another. Notice people you don't know. Wave at someone you don't know. Do one of these little gunslinger things at someone you don't know, okay? (laughs) Wink at someone you don't know, okay? Do all the stuff. Because, friends, today's text is all about intentionality. Everything that Paul is going to tell us here in the book of Philippians, he's saying, just do it. Okay, so let's jump in. The Philippians chapter 4, starting in verse 1. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge you, Adia, sure, and I urge Syntyche, sure, to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, My loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, Whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. And here our scripture text ends. Let's consider how we'll apply these words of God to our lives this morning. We're in the final week of this sermon series all about our identity and how our identity and our faith connect and collide and come together. And we've been exploring this little letter to the Philippians as we've been discovering just how our identity and faith influence and transform one another. And today we get to chapter 4 here where Paul looks at us and goes, Oh, by the way, rejoice, be gentle, pray, Don't be anxious. Don't worry. Be happy? Wait a minute, that was, that's another guy. That's right. Yeah, that's another one, right? Just do it. Just do it. Just conjure it up. Manifest it. Any of you ever been to one of those? Those little workshops, seminars, the kind of Tony Robbins kind, right? Where he's running up here and be like, just do it, yeah, right? Uh Uh-huh, it's a little too much energy for you all this morning. I can feel it. I can see it. I'm, I'm catching the vibe here, right? Because after the week that we've seen in the news, things going on around the world, we're like, Wait a minute, rejoice? Be gentle? What? Sure, prayers and supplication, right? Prayer and some good thoughts out to the world, out to the other side of the world. Maybe it'll do something, right? But don't be anxious. Come on, Paul. Come on, Justin. We're very anxious, aren't we? We're worried. 
Yeah. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, let that guard your heart. How do we do that? And we haven't even touched on our own individual situations yet, have we? We're just talking about world news on the other side of the globe, right? The moment we start jumping into things, right? How's everyone's marriages doing this Sunday morning, right? How's your relationship with your kids, your siblings, your neighbors, your coworkers? How's that job going? Oh, by the way, have you looked in the mail lately? How's the debt, right? Oh, yeah. How's the stock market doing? Oh, yeah, we really don't talk about that right now, right? Whoo, wow. And, of course, there's doctors and health lines and reports. All of it, right? We start piling on everything, and you hear Paul go, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. I think there's a reason why he said it that way. Rejoice. Oh, by the way, if you didn't hear it the first time, rejoice. Right? For as much as I can make fun of the Tony Robbins and the, those workshops and those seminars and getting all excited, I really do believe at the end of the day that you and I choose joy. We choose gentleness. We choose prayer. We choose not to be anxious. We choose peace. We choose it. It's an intentional decision that you and I make in the midst of the worst places in life. We choose it. Our circumstances do not determine how you and I are in our identity and faith. Anyone been to a memorial service? You can all raise your hands. Yep, you all have been there, right? Anyone laugh in a memorial service? Mm Mm-hmm. Anyone choose good memories in the face of death? Good. See? You can do it. Anyone been in a place and moment in life that's just full and crazy full of worry, anxiety, and all the fear? And in the middle of it, you choose to sit down? Choose to even close your eyes? And somewhere in that choosing of closing your eyes, you fall asleep. Mm -hmm. It happens to us, doesn't it? Anyone in the middle of rage and hate and hurt and all of your power trying to bring it forth to change the situation, and in the middle of it, you decide to attack the other way and be gentle and merciful and compassionate. And gracious. Yeah. See, friends, we do this all the time. We make these choices. And they're easier to make when we know that there is a God who is near. Did you catch that little phrase right there in the middle of Paul's text? It goes, oh, by the way, God's near. Uh, Okay, yep, knew that, Paul. No, Paul's going, no, 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 no. Pay attention. God's near. God is near. Not far away. Not unobservant. Not distant. God's near. Right here in the midst. Close by. Alongside. God's near. We 
Because if I think God's far away, I'm going to be anxious. I'm going to be anxious because that's what we human beings are really good at. When things get out of control, we think, you know what, the best way to handle this situation is to worry it to death, right? That's going to keep me clear-headed, right? Yeah. And so Paul goes, no, God's near. You don't have to be anxious. And you don't have to be powerful. And you don't have to conjure it all up together on your own. God's here in the midst of it. And when we choose to see God in the midst of it, I can rejoice. I don't have to worry. I can choose gentleness. Right? And all of a sudden this thing called peace begins happening. In here. But how do we do that? How in the midst of all of the stuff do we really get to the place that we choose these things? Because I don't know about you, I have a really hard time choosing those things. It's not that I haven't done it before. I have. Sometimes I've just tripped into those things. Right? I'm in the middle of a situation. I'm like, I'm all right. I didn't know I was all right. Oh, look at that. God's here, right? But what I need to do is get there faster. Choose it intentionally. And Paul gives us the prescription for how to do that. He says, whatever is good, whatever is beautiful, Whatever is pure, whatever is just, whatever is commendable, think on these things. I want you to take a moment, close your eyes. What is good in the world? What is beautiful? What is just and fair? What is commendable? What is true? You can open your eyes. And I'm going to add one to Paul's list. What is shareable? What can you share with someone around you? What can you share with someone around you right now? I want you to turn to someone near you and share one of those things that was good, lovely, beautiful, true, just, commendable. Share it. Now I want you to stand up, and I want you to switch sides, okay? I literally want you to stand up. I want you to walk to the other side of the room. I want you to collide with someone, someone that you collide with. I want you to share what is true and good and pure and lovely. He was in prison, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's true. It's true. Who will win? Okay, let me interrupt these beautiful moments, these 
gorgeous connections, this goodness that's happening right here in the midst of us. Friends, where I disagree with all those seminars and workshops is that that conjuring doesn't just happen inside of you. It happens in the interactions that we have with one another. If I need to find joy, I go to a friend, right? If I need to find beauty, I walk outside, right? If I need to find what is true, I open up this book. If I want to find what is just I begin looking around the world to people and places and institutions that I go. They are centered on justice and fairness. If I'm looking for compassion, I just look to all of our helpers, all of our servants, all of our people who come alongside in the world, all these people whose whole being and job seems to be oriented towards emergencies and coming alongside, right? I can look around my world and discover that there are good people and good things and a good creation. And, oh, yeah, there's a good God who declared in the very beginning that it's all good. All of creation is good. And all creatures are good, which means I'm good, means you're good. And then I can rejoice in the Lord always. Then I don't have to be anxious. Then my prayers and supplication get centered in. Then peace wells up inside of me because I realize that God has been near the whole time. Amen. Would you join me in the spirit of prayer this morning? Gracious and loving God, we come into this sanctuary full of all of our anxieties and worries, frustrations and fears, the headlines, the devastations and violence happening in Israel and Palestine. It sends chills down our spine to see such violence and to see such innocent bloodshed. God, we become consumed with these headlines, so worried about the future of our world that we forget that your presence is right here with us that your presence promises to go before us, to never leave us, to never forsake us. And even in the midst of such violence and tragedies in this world, you still call us good. You still call us loved. And you still call us to live out the ministry of Christ, of justice and mercy, which is sometimes simply a handshake, sometimes simply a hug, a smile at a stranger, allowing someone to weave into traffic when they need to. The smallest moments of gestures are, God, your invitation to be a divine responsibility of love and mercy to this entire world. So may we not be burdened down by the headline, but may we take pride and confidence in the call to which you have called each and every single one of us is to simply be love, be light in the darkness, Be justice, be forgiveness, be pure joy, and to share all of these things from the depths of our souls out into every corner of this world so the world will look more like you, that we would look more like you. God, thank you for such a privilege it is to carry this ministry within us and out into the world. Thank you for this safe sanctuary this morning where we can come and worship and express ourselves and to celebrate ourselves and celebrate you, God. We bind up the prayers spoken today and all the unspoken prayers of our hearts saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Imagine there's no heaven It's easy if you try No hell below us Above us only sky Imagine all the people Living for today. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Imagine there's no country. It isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for. No religion to. Imagine all the people living like living life in peace. You, you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us. And the world will live as one. Imagine no possession. I wonder if you can. No need for greed or hunger. Brotherhood of man. Say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us, and the world will live as one. I'm going to invite our elder, Diane Gusty, to come up here and introduce our staff appreciation today. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I'd like to have the HR committee, because I'm only one of them, Stan, Janet, Jack, Betsy, Kathy. We wanted to sh introduce you to, if you don't know them, honor and appreciate the great staff we here, have here today at Grace. And I think that uh, many of you know Justin as our leader, senior pastor, and moderator of session, but you may not know him as, and I want to introduce him as, the head of staff. <laughs> another, another hat he wears here at Grace, and I'd like him to introduce to you his staff. Thank you, Diane, and you all can be seated right now. Head of staff, what does that mean? Well, usually it means we go and hire people who are very, very competent, and then they tell me what to do, okay? And that's really how I like it to work. And so on screen in front of you, you've got all of these names, and I'm going to call them down here to come and stand right here along the stage. And we're going to go in order from most recent to the people who've been here the longest. So... 
Without further ado, Lizzie, come on down. Lizzie serves back here in the booth. She is a worship technician. We love having Lizzie on staff. Come on down. She's not used to being up here on stage in front of people. Next, someone who is used to being on stage in front of people, Danny Hillier, our pastoral ministry associate. Now, Danny takes the prize for wearing the most different job titles since she's been on staff, actually. So she started out as pastoral ministry associate. Then she changed to pastoral intern because, well, she was doing her internship. And then when that finished up in May, we didn't only just make her pastoral ministry assistant, we upgraded you to associate. So there you go. Next, come on down, Doug Chatfield back there in the back, once again in the booth, worship technician, AV extraordinaire. And then in the back, who's often in the back, but bringing her up on in front of you all, Jessica Hagen. Jessica was with us for about two and a half years now, two years, two and a half years, something like that. Jessica works with our families, our children, our youth, and we're so glad to have her in and among us. Next, who's not here this morning, and we're going to celebrate her here in the weeks to come because she's on a trip right now in New York City, actually, is Chris Garente. Now, you all in this service don't get to interact with Chris that much, but she leads our choir and all of our music ensembles here at Grace. She is doing an amazing job. Amazing job. At some point, you 9 a.m. people should try the 1030 service so you can hear all of her magnificent abilities. Next, David Van Deeren. <laughs> Dave's been here for three years. I, I, I'm going to cry. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I could not do what I do without Dave. In our nursery, Fran Fox. Fran, come on down. <laughs> working with the littlest among us, working with their parents and their grandparents. And here's the thing, friends, most of you never venture down that hallway and meet Fran and Bev, but I will tell you, they are incredible, incredible people, and we love having them here. Sheila Chester. Now, of course, you know her for all of her band leading and singing and awesome worship leading, but in, in between Sundays, she is putting together all of our marketing, all of our communications, keeping me somewhat organized, me trying to keep you organized, I don't know how it works, um, but Sheila's the person that when I can't figure out who else should do it, I call Sheila, <laughs> and she figures it out and gets it done. Google. You Google it, there you go. Is that all I have to do? <laughs> Heather Goss, Heather. <laughs> Heather actually runs the church. I, honestly, like, Heather makes sure that this place works, that the wheels stay on the truck, and that it keeps moving forward. Some of you never have met Heather because. You just get emails from her about your giving records or those kinds of things, right? But she's the person who keeps the rest of us moving forward. Bev Horney. Bev, come on down. Bev, once again, is in the nursery working with our littles, working with our parents. Bev has been not only on staff here for a while now, but Bev has been, it was a volunteer before that in the nursery for many, many years. Bev, we absolutely love that you love us and love our littles among us. Thank you. And finally, the one, the only, Linda Schneider.
how many years? 37. 37 years, friends. 37 years. How many pastors? How many senior pastors? <laughs> the inner, the inner rooms? No, we don't count. They don't count. <clears throat> Not that many for 37 years. Yes, that is true. But you've been through many of the eras of grace, right? She is not only an incredible pianist, keyboardist, and organist, okay? You all know that she is an incredible personality. And the thing that I love about Linda is that someone who can survive that many pastors... Okay, and still love what they do and continue to even, I don't, I don't know how you continue to make your craft go to the next level. But Linda, it is an absolute joy to work with you. Thank you. You need to know a story. A couple years ago, Linda was uh, serving as the mom mops coordinator. And she came in. This is in like my second year here, right? She comes in the office. She goes, hey, Justin, I need to let you know I'm resigning. And there was this pause. And in, in my mind, the pause lasted forever, okay? And, and my soul fell out of my body. And in my head, I wrote my own resignation letter, Okay? <laughs> In that one and a half seconds, all of that took place. And then she finished the sentence from mops. And I went, oh, thank God. (laughs) That I can handle. That I can handle. So Linda and I have a deal, okay? Linda is going to play for eternity. Okay? And as long as she plays, guess what? I get to be your pastor. <laughs> Friends, this is our staff. They are an incredible, incredible group to work with. Each and every one of them not only have all kinds of talents, but we have a lot of fun together. Sometimes too much fun, honestly. Sometimes coming in the office is just like, this is going to be a blast today. You should see staff meetings. They're a little crazy, okay? Okay. And yet that's why I love working here at Grace Monday through Friday. During those days during the week, it's because of these lovely people right here. So give them a big round of applause as they take their seats this morning. Catch that cake out there after this. Very good. Dave. We are expressing our generosity and our gratitude. And uh, we're we're late in the service now. So I just want to invite the ushers to come forward. And uh, it's what Justin was talking about all the time. Uh, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice in the midst of everything we do. Just always taking time right now. Oh, uh, every time he raises his hand, we'll say that phrase. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Just uh, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. You know, we can text to give. We can give online. We can uh, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your rejoicing, let your gratitude interrupt your lives. May our ushers come forward. Rejoice in the <laughs> Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. <laughs> you found somebody that knew what he was good at. That's, yeah. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. Then 
Friends, you're going out into the world. It's full of all the stuff, all of the things that put us in a negative space, in a negative place. And they're all real. They're all true. And yet, as you and I connect with one another, as we connect with God's good creation, we will discover what is good and beautiful and lovely and just, and true. And as we do that, friends, we can rejoice. We can be gentle. We can leave our anxiety at the door. And we will discover the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. And when you need help with that, because we will, know that God is near. The Holy Spirit is going out into the world in front of you. The wind of God is at your back. The breath of God is all around on your left and on your right, above you and below you, inside of you, and all around you, today and forevermore. Join me for uh, this intermission right down here in the office. Thanks, everyone. Then sings my soul, my Savior God.